Hello and welcome to the third part in this inequalities series of videos. Now what I think is very important to do is to recap and go over part two with the starter now in front of you. So what I would like you to do is solve these inequalities just in the same way that we solved inequalities in part two. So have a go at these inequalities and see whether you can get the right answer. Pause your video now. Okay, if you got this correct, you would have got x is less than 4, and for part b, x is less than or equal to minus 8. Now, congratulations if you got those. If, however, you didn't get both of those questions correct, what I would recommend is stop this video and go over inequalities part two again. Mathematics, you build on what you have done before. And if your foundations on inequalities are a little shaky, then I highly recommend you go back to inequalities part two. If, however, you found that very easy, that's great. Let's move on to graphing inequalities and looking at the regions bounded by inequalities. I will explain those words as we go along. So, for this question, we are going to shade the region, that's colour in, corresponding to the inequalities below. Now, whenever you have this very typical kind of IGCSE or GCSE question, what you need to do, first of all, is plot them as if they are equalities, as if they are equations. Then, after that, we will then worry about how to work out what the inequality means. So, our first step is to plot x equals 1, x equals 3, y equals 5, and y equals x, because they correspond to the inequalities below. Now, take five seconds. What do you think the line x equals 1 looks like? Now, you should know this from previous videos. x equals 1 is a vertical line from 1. Now, we are going to do a dotted line. I will explain why it's a dotted line at the end of the question. x equals 3. We do that in the same way. We draw a vertical line from 3. Don't forget to go all the way down as well. So if x equals 1 and x equals 3 are vertical lines, I'll give you 5 seconds. What would y equals 5 look like? Hopefully you all got the right answer. y equals 5, five is a horizontal line going across from 5. Well done if you got that. Now y equals x is slightly more difficult. It basically means that y and x have to be the same number. That means 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. And so we get this diagonal line going at 45 degrees all the way up to 6, 6. And don't forget to go all the way down as well. Now let's look at the inequalities. Now we used a dotted line because it's just less than or greater than. If there is a line underneath the crocodile symbol, then that means we draw a solid line on the graph. We will look at that in our second example. So let's look at the inequalities. X is greater than 1, so we want everything bigger than the line. X is greater than 3, we want everything greater than the line x equals 3. 
Okay, we want y is less than 5, so we want everything under the line of 5. And last of all, we want y is greater than x, so we want everything above the line. So we want everything this way and downwards and upwards. That means our shaded region will be the triangle in here. And you can spend a few minutes colouring that in by yourself, if you so wish. OK, let's look at our second example. And I will go over again what the dotted line and the straight line means. So we approach this question in exactly the same way. We already know about x is greater than, less than or equal to 5. We draw the line x equals 5 that corresponds to it. So x equals 5 is the vertical line that goes from 5. However, because we have less than or equal to 5, we draw a solid line all the way up. That tells then the examiner that x can equal 5 as well as everything less than it as well. However, we do the others in the similar way to the first example. y equals 0 will be the x-axis because y is 0 at each of these coordinates. So we draw a dotted line right on the x-axis. Now, y equals x minus 1 is a more difficult example. If you're not sure about equations of straight lines, then please watch my video on y equals mx plus c. For those that have covered y equals mx plus c, you'll know that the M stands for the gradient, the steepness of the line, whereas C stands for the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. So in this case, my y-intercept will be minus 1. So we start here. And then it goes up on a gradient of 1. What that means in reality is that we go 1 across, 1 up. 1 across, 1 up, 1 across, 1 up, and so on. Remember, we do a dotted line because it's just a less than symbol. So again, we draw our 45 degree line, but this time we start at minus 1 and not at 0. Now we go for our inequalities using those arrows to help us exactly where to shade in. You should not assume it's always this big triangle in the middle. Examiners will know that you assume this and they will change the questions around to try and confuse you. So always do this check. Now x is less than or equal to 5. So it will be under this line here, less than 5. y is greater than 0, so above the x-axis. And finally, y is less than x minus 1, so it's below the diagonal line. And as I said, you shouldn't assume this, but it is the region of the triangle in the middle, like so. And we are done. We have then found the specific region. Now, a lot of my students often ask the question in many maths topics, including inequalities, what purpose does this have in real life? Well, a very simple example with this is, for example, in being an architect. If you're an architect, you need to know the specific boundaries of a particular plot of land or a particular building and so on. And this allows you to then find the region in between buildings, uh, which particular owner has ownership of a particular part of land. So it's an important technique and we're using our mathematical resources, our mathematical geometry, if you will, to actually work this out.
Now, in order to do some practice, I highly recommend you look into the description under the video and click on the link that says the booklet. Now, I use the booklets from Corbett Maths. He is an excellent YouTuber. He provides lots of great resources for the variety of different GCSE courses. And I really highly recommend that you go and see his website. I'll put the link in the description as well. So click on the link that says booklet and have a go at those questions. If you're not sure how to do the first question, as always in my videos, I will help you with the first question. Okay, so hopefully you got to the booklet and you have question one in front of you. Now it says on the grid clearly indicate the region that satisfies all these inequalities. So the first thing is to find the equalities, their corresponding equalities. That is, we want to look at x equals 3, y equals 1, and the slightly more tricky x plus y is equal to 5. Now the first two is just the same as in my examples. We draw a vertical line at 3. Remember it's a solid line up at 3 because there is a greater than or equal symbol. That's really important to notice. Likewise y equals 1 is a solid line that goes all the way across from 1. Remember, y equals 1. Now, this one is a bit more difficult. What we're going to do is use some of the algebra skills you've learnt in earlier parts of this series and in the equation series as well. What we want to do is make y the subject. Now that means, in practice, we want y on its own. We have a plus x here, so we want to do the opposite of plus x. That will be minus x on both sides. And so we get y on its own, what we wanted. The plus x cancels with the minus x. We put the minus x first. And then we put the plus 5. Now, back to the example I gave you a minute ago. This means that the y-intercept, which I talked about earlier, is plus 5. So we start at plus 5. And the gradient is minus 1. Remember, minus x means the same thing as minus 1x. That's really important. In terms of our graph, it means we go one across, one down, one across, one down, one across, one down, one across, one down, one across, one down. And we get that 45 degree line that we're used to all the way through like so. Remember, a solid line because we have a less than or equal to five. Now let's work out where our region is. X, e x is greater than or equal to 3. So we're going this way from our line. Y is greater than or equal to 1. So we're going above the line. And then X plus Y is less than 5, which means we go under this line. Therefore, our region, as like a lot of our questions, is going to be our triangle in there. Again, you can take a minute, say well done to yourself and colour in the triangle. Now before I finish and give you the answers to the booklet, I would like to look at a more difficult question, which is this one here, question five. Again, we treat it in the same way, so we have x equals to y equals 2x minus 2. That's convenient because it's written in the correct way. 
This is slightly inconvenient. X plus Y minus plus 2 is equal to 0. OK, so let's plot our lines as per usual. X equals 2 is a vertical line going from 2 and it's solid because we have a less than or equal sign. So we'll draw a solid line all the way up and don't forget all the way down from 2. Now this line, we look at the y-intercept and the gradient. The y-intercept is minus 2. So we start there, and this time we have a gradient of 2, which means we go 1 across and 2 up this time. 1 across, 2 up. 1 across, 2 up. 1 across, 2 up. And 1 across, 2 down. So we get a dotted line, much steeper this time than what we had before. And have a think, why do we have a dotted line? Well, that's because we have a less than symbol, not a less than or equal to symbol. Now, this third question was a little bit more difficult. That's because we need to write it in the right form. Like before, we're going to minus x from both sides to get y on its own. This cancels, we get y plus 2 is equal to minus x. And then we do a similar step, a minus 2 on both sides to remove the plus 2. They cancel. We get y equals minus x minus 2. Now we use the information, just like in our second question, we have a y-intercept of minus 2, very similar to what we had, but this time our gradient is minus x. So we go 1 along, 1 down, 1 along, 1 down, and then in the opposite direction, like so. And then we join this up with a dotted line because it's a greater than symbol. So we do our 45 degree line this time, it's getting a little bit wobbly, but we are getting there. Good. Now we need to work out what the inequality means. So x is less than or equal to 2, which means it's going to be going this way with our arrow. y is less than 2x minus 2. Well, that means we go this way. And then finally, x plus y plus 2 is greater than 0. We're going up here. Yep, this time it's our favorite triangle again. And this time it takes a little longer to shade in this triangle. Again, you have to have plenty of fun at home doing this yourself. Like so. Excellent. So if you want to go through the easy question again, have a look at question one that I just did. However, if you're looking for more of a challenge, question five is probably more your cup of tea. Now, in the description below, there is now a link to the answers to the Corbett Maths Inequalities booklet. So stop the video, click on the link, and then make sure that you've got all the correct answers. If you're not sure, look at my examples from question one and five, and also go through the solutions given to you in the booklet itself. So I hope you've checked all your answers there. Congratulations if you got a majority of them right. I am now going to look to move on to a different topic. However, if I do get some time, I will do some extension work on working backwards through these problems. So you're given the diagram and you have to work out the inequality. And then finally, I will look at quadratic inequalities, which is towards the A, A star part of the GCSE and IGCSE syllabus. Thank you for watching this series on inequalities. 
Um, thank you for all the support I've received so far and all the enthusiasm that